So I think a challenge that has really been a theme all the way through Jeremiah so far, but I want to pick up particularly today, is where, where are we going for our help? Where do we look for help? God here has repeatedly come to the people of Israel and he said to them so many times, uh, change the way you're acting. This isn't what we agreed to. This isn't how uh, we set out our terms of agreement right at the start when we made the covenant with one another, this binding agreement of relationship. And you see that in chapter 11 where it talks about a covenant being broken and God just reminding Jeremiah, look, when you go to the people, say this, don't you remember that back in the day when I brought you out of Egypt, I said obey me and do what I'm telling you and I will be your God and you will be my people and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there and it'll be great. Um, but, but, and then go through every basic town and you'll see that all of these towns have broken the covenant, the agreement. So it's not that God isn't saying to Israel over and over and over again, listen to me, you should be behaving like this and you're not. And then even just you see at the start of chapter 9, when you say, it talks again about... Um, Go to them, call these wailing women, tell them to start crying, tell them that everything's ruined. Now you women, hear the word of the Lord, open your ears to the words of his mouth. Um, verse 20, all the way through, it's all about listen, listen, listen. And this is just one prophet of the many prophets that we read in the Bible. And the, uh, the prophets are in the Bible are not the only prophets that went around with messages that we get recorded incidents of other prophets that we know were operating in the, among the people of Israel and among the people of Judah. So there were so many messengers from God and yet nobody listened to them. And today we have the Bible and we've got a lot of Bible, like there's a whole load of it because it's taking us a while to read it, isn't it? There's so many words from God and yet so few of us pay attention to what he says. So few of us are willing to come to him to listen and not just to listen, but to, to, to open our eyes to the fact that he's so willing to help us. And instead we go and we find these other things that we think will help. We find we read self-help books or we go on um, uh, we go on kind of websites to try and find little tips or we try and just grit our teeth and, and try harder to solve the problem. And we don't come to God who can solve every problem. And God actually, in chapter 10, there's this wonderful comparison between idols and God Almighty. And it talks about the idols that, that can't speak. They're as dumb as a scarecrow sitting in a cucumber field. And then there's the God of the universe who made everything. There are idols that are going to perish on the earth and under the heavens. And then there's the God who made earth and heaven, the king who's eternal. And it compares these tiny, pathetic little bits of wood with the one who made the entire cosmos. Um, the God who made the entire cosmos is a much better place to go than ourselves, um, even than our friends, and certainly uh, than self-help books and other places we look to try and deal with our issues. God wants to help listen to him saying that all the way through this book and then accept his offer come to him today in prayer and ask him for help